Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we are going to look at a project that is related to the manufacturing process for semiconductor parts. So we will build a classifier that classifies a part as pass or fail uh, based on the data that's collected from a semiconductor manufacturing process. And the video is divided in two parts. Part one deals with reading the data in and pre-processing it. Part two is where we build the machine learning classifiers. And I'd like to thank the authors and UCI machine learning repository for providing this data set and making it open source so that we can use it. I've put the link for the source and uh, for downloading this data set in the description as well. So this is just uh, my intuition of uh, kind of summary or story of how the electronic ma art manufacturing process may be occurring. So we have these chips that are coming around the conveyor belt after they are created or made. And there are these sensors that would sense uh, different features while they are in transport or while they are being manufactured, maybe even before this. And there could be some sensors after uh, they are manufactured, such as a, maybe some station where each uh, different sensor measure different uh, uh, features or different parameters for that manufactured part. And all that sensor data is then collected and uh, used to train a machine learning model to decide whether this particular chip should be trashed or it should be considered as a good part and then used in downstream manufacturing. So the data set is fairly simple. Uh, you download this zip file, get three files within it. And the first two files have the data uh, labels and the data. So if we look at the data uh, right here, this is the data set and there are no column headers for this. So this entire first, uh, these, this particular that's one string and if you scroll down there are around 1500 such uh, lines so what we are going to do is read each of these lines and then split it after we read it into Jupyter notebook and if you look at the labels uh, file we have this we have the label as minus one or plus one depending on pass or fail so minus one is not a defective part one is a defective part and then uh, this is the timestamp associated uh, for that particular part so uh, we are going to use these timestamps as well and remove them from this labels and put them in the actual data now let's get into jupyter notebook and start coding here in Jupyter Notebook, uh, again, I have put the citations here so for the data set, and this is from the UCI machine learning repository. We also have the links for downloading the data set in the description as well. For the libraries, these are the libraries that we'll be using. Uh, most of them would be for classifiers, and then these are the versions that I'm using. And I'm setting the PD dot set underscore options to 2000, just in case if we need to look at the rows in the data frame or a series. Now for part one, so let's get started with part one. First, what we'll do is, uh, as usual, read the data. So let's do that. I'll set the path. And because I've already downloaded the file to my desktop, I'm going to navigate to that folder. And that is CCOM. And then within this folder, so once the path is set, uh, we just have to read those two files. So read the first file in X, pd.read underscore CSV, then path plus com or data and the extension is data but we can still read it with the read underscore csv 
and then for file name uh, because it's just going to be just one column uh, just to check that we can look at the header so as you can see it's just one column and what i'm going to do is give it the name columns is equal to this is just i'll just call it f list and after this we need the y so y is equal to pd dot read underscore csv path a plus ccom underscore labels dot data and header again this is header is equal to none and we can print the shape so x dot shape y dot shape and as you can see they both have just one column uh, now we'll pre-process the data and pull out all the columns from each of those so pre-processing and the first item that we look at is getting the timestamp out from y so let's do that uh, there okay get timestamp and label so for this i'll create a variable get underscore timestamp is equal to y dot i lock and because of y so if we look at y zero sorry y dot i lock zero so we have this entire thing is a string so we need to split it to get just this first part and then get the second part for timestamp for timestamp we'll get the index one and i lock so all rows then column zero because that's the only column there dot apply lambda x uh, is called s then pd dot timestamp s dot split so we are going to split that string using this double quotes so we'll get this uh this string of timestamps in a separate I, as a separate item so add that here and from that we are just going to get the index one so if you check what you could do is get the string from this one so we have the string and then add that and as you can see we can get the timestamp out from this by specifying this one there so with that we have the get timestamp done and now we'll get the label so y is equal to y dot i lock and again it's all rows column zero dot apply lambda s and integer so we are going to convert that one minus one to integer s dot split and we'll again so this time we'll split it on space so we get just the first part and then zero now we can print get underscore timestamp dot shape and then y dot shape so let's see what there s is not defined and that's because i put s the put s there okay so we have around 1500 records in there now for timestamp we already converted it to timestamp so we can now use it as well uh, for getting the month day and year etc now the second task is to convert feature string to columns and if we look at x dot head we have this as just one long string so we are going to split that into uh, multiple columns and to do that what you want to do is type x is equal to x and this is f underscore list in the name of the column str dot split and we'll split it on space and say expand is equal to true and then x is equal to x dot as type to convert it to float and then we can print x dot shape and print the head first two columns First two rows of that and so here we have the uh, data frame with all the numbers in there and 
here we can also check how many are null and all those things so if we look at x dot is a na dot sum you can see there are some values that are null uh, some columns have way many values that are null and if we scroll down yep so there are some values some mm, columns that have almost all the values that are zero but what we don't know is are those uh, so let's say if we look at 110 so if we look at the index i lock 110 is that equal is that a pass or fail we don't know that and that's a pass so maybe 109 and that's a pass too so we'll see how to handle all these null values uh, as we move forward uh, uh, before we start any other adding any other stuff to this data frame what i want to do is create a list of original columns because we'll use those to create new features later on and having this list uh, help would help us to kind of isolate and process only these original columns for that original columns is equal to x dot columns and so we now have a list of all the original columns in there the next item that we need to take care of is uh, these indices right now for x they are just numeric we need to put a timestamp as index so to do that what we can do is add a timestamp there so add timestamp to time timestamp as index to both x and y so to do that uh, what we are going to do is type x dot index is equal to get underscore timestamp so that's for x and we can look at print x dot shape again and print x dot head and just to make sure everything looks good and we have set the timestamp as index for the data frame and now similarly for y we'll do now y dot index is equal to get underscore timestamp and y dot iloc zero to three and we can see that now the timestamp is as set as an index for the labels y next what we'll do is uh look at nns and this time fill nns so because this is a manufacturing process and we have a timeline associated with these data points uh, uh what i was thinking is that maybe we, if there is a missing data point uh in future then we could replace it by the data point that's in the past for that particular location and you know, so we can use that uh, fill in a method to kind of do a forward fill as well as backward fill if there are any missing data in there and i'm i understand that we are not deleting the columns that have too many nns in this case and one of the reasons what i'm thinking is because each of those columns is a different sensor and maybe each sensor has some information that could be relevant so we'll run through this loop and you could try removing those uh, columns and seeing if you get a better model fit uh, or if you uh, leave them in there and try a different type of fill uh, do you get a different type of effect so in this case we'll proceed with a forward fill and back fill x dot forward fill and this is axis zero and then again we'll do a back fill on that so x dot back so if there is a first value that is uh nn then we it could be filled with a back fill so b fill again axis is equal to zero now the next part uh because we are talking about um uh manufacturing process where the parts uh could be defective or good and they are associated with the timeline so one part comes after the next after next and each part has an associated timestamp so the data in each of the columns 
uh, we can think of it as uh, so those are the measurements from a sensor and so what we could do is to identify a faulty fault see if those measurements are outside a certain threshold and so we can flag if each sensor data point is within or outside 95 percent confidence limits and uh, confidence intervals so if this could be a new feature so what we can do is each for each measurement in from each of the sensors we can flag it as one or zero depending on so one if it is uh, outside so if it's a outlier and zero if it's a good data point so to do that we'll write a function ef get underscore outside ci ci underscore flag and we'll take input a series z underscore critical so we are using the z score stats dot norm dot p e f q is equal to 0 0.975 and then we have ac standard error np dot uh, standard deviation for a s divided by np dot sqrt length of s so that's the n and then margin of error moe is z underscore critical into the standard error so that's our margin of error and then confidence interval ci is equal to then np dot mean of s um, minus the margin of error and then the upper bound would be np dot mean of s plus margin of error and so if we look at the series flags s underscore flag is equal to x column so for the incoming column apply uh, apply lambda uh, x zero if um, so we have two conditions here so uh, let's put them so one condition here and then the second condition here if this is true then do that else i want to put one so the first condition is x is greater than or equal to ci zero and the next condition x less than or equal to ci one so this would be the ci one and this would be the ci zero and we are replacing that value in the x uh, x column or alternatively we could uh, uh, yeah so we are applying it to this so this should be s uh, because we are applying it to s and now when we run this that's our uh, function and now we'll create calls underscore 95 ci so we are creating a list of all the columns that will now be created just so that we can keep track of them and if you want to use them later on it's easy to find them calls in x dot columns and here we have x and this is outside underscore 95 confidence interval that's the prefix we are adding to each of the column names now to differentiate them and this is equal to get underscore outside underscore ci underscore flag and here we pass x call and the returned value of s flag so let's return s underscore flag so that return value of s flag would then be uh, saved in stored in that particular column and we can also print shape of x x dot shape and we can look at x our first two records from the new data frame so when we run this see what we get and here if we scroll all the way here and these are the new columns so we have outside we can check one column so if we look at this one zero three zero three and so for one we go all the way this side 
so that particular data point is outside the 95 percent confidence interval that's flagged and so we have all the ones and zeros listed in there next another feature that we can add is uh, which could be interesting is that if we know that uh, for for each sensor there are certain number of data points that are outside the threshold then we could sum them up for each of the uh, part that comes in and so maybe a part that has higher number of uh, such outlier outlier data points maybe that turns out to be a defective part so uh, therefore we'll create another column here uh, which is sum all the ones so we are summing all the ones outside 95 yeah, confidence interval so all the ones in those columns that we created and therefore that's where the list that we created here that's going to come in handy x and this is sum underscore outside underscore 95 ci is equal to x and this is calls underscore 95 ci dot sum and this is axis is equal to one and when we run that that's our, our data frame if we look at the uh, column we should see our last column okay so that's the new column we have and uh, something is not right because there are already some ones here so scroll back up and okay so i'm um, sorry about that didn't use this list to append the column names so that's why that list is empty ci dot append and here we want to type outside underscore 95 underscore 95 ci underscore then plus str column and that's integer that's why we are using that as a string and now we run this this will re this should rerun so we should get 1180 as the number of columns after this completes the run okay and that did not so let me go back and run all the columns again all the cells again run all of these and now we have that is said and this time we should get all the numbers so okay so this is good we have around 429 data points for the sample part in row number one that uh, that was manufactured now next let's create some uh, new features as we are working through this so the first one we can create a cumulative sum so cum sum and what this is is we are just adding sequentially all the numbers so for call in x x dot columns if and now because we have a new set of columns in there we need to pull only the original columns and that's where we are going to use the uh, series list that we created earlier x underscore origin underscore columns and then uh, here we can uh, create another new set of columns with abbreviation cumulative sum cum sum underscore and then plus str column and this is equal to x column dot cum sum and now we can print shape of x print x dot shape and original so typo and when we run this we get a new we have one seven seven one columns here and uh, so we are continuously adding to the number of features we have next let's create some rolling uh, features so rolling values so this could be rolling mean standard deviation uh, you could uh, add uh, new values in as well so um, in this video i'm going to use mean and standard deviation and the reason for that is as we are moving along with them if there is a sharp increase or decrease in the value of mean maybe 
that could help the model train to locate a particular defective part uh, if call in so again we want to use only the original columns and so that x and here we'll prefix this so mean underscore seven days the seven day mean uh, it's a seven day rolling window uh, string column is equal to x call dot rolling and seven and then center is equal to true dot mean so that's the first feature and the second one uh, we'll create a standard deviation so this is mean so we'll say that this is standard deviation and this would be std and then uh, additionally i want to look at maybe the standard deviation per day basis so each day is there any change in standard deviation so maybe that could help so let's again print the shape of x and keep track of how many features we are adding so now we are at uh, 300 3541 so we have this is now a horizontal data set because we have more number of features than the number of samples this time point the so next uh, let's look at time so time and if you can extract any values from there so x dot uh, month and so if we uh, before we do that what i wanted to show is if we look at time dot index so these are the indices and if you look at the max we have this the year is 2008 and if you look at min it is still 2008 so there's no point in getting the uh, year out of this timestamp so what we'll do is we'll get the month so month is equal to x dot index dot month and then we'll get the weekday uh, x which is equal to x dot index dot weekday now the reason for the month is uh, to see if there is a seasonal variation in the uh, hours that come out to be defective maybe in holiday season uh, there are more uh, defective parts because there is less lesser staff or maybe there is a higher workload uh, uh, certain situations like that and for a weekday this could be sort of maybe if it's a weekend then people are trying to get off work sooner and maybe that affects the quality i don't know so that's that's just a thought behind using these and then for hourly basis we'll use these hour to figure out if it's a morning shift day shift or night shift and then maybe if if it's a night shift then you a person could feel sleepy and therefore maybe uh, keeping track of the data from sensors uh, is missed at times and that could create defective parts so that's just a thought there and then based on that we can create time of day so time of day and of this time underscore off underscore day and here we'll create late uh, late night so that's one we have early morning uh, thing and then we have early, after early morning we have morning and then noon then evening and finally let's add night now uh, we'll store this in a new column called work underscore shift so uh, it's not actually a shift so there are only three shifts in a day but uh, just for uh, this particular example we'll put them in words uh, work underscore shift td dot cut and x our the bins that we'll create is zero zero four eight 
12 16 20 24 and then the labels are going to be time of day that we created earlier time of day and then include lowest is equal to true so with that we can print x dot shape again and uh, look at x dot head so we now have you would have one additional column as before yep so we added four there and then this is five so we have three five four five if you look at the last column we have these uh, time points now listed here morning evening etc now before moving forward and creating more features or processing we can visualize the data because we have sufficient features to now kind of look at what's inside the data and how it varies with time so i've looked at this before and spent uh, time on thinking and trying to find out what could be uh, uh, if there are any trends in the data uh, when we look at the timeline and that's what i wanted to share here and b so we are coloring these so the past parts are blue and the failed parts are going to be red c is equal to c y dot map and this is c map and plt dot scatter x dot i lock and we are going to look at all the records and let's I uh, use any any random column so let's look at column 8 and x dot i lock again all records in any random column 9 c is equal to c and let's look at the plot and let's put an alpha there alpha is equal to 0 0.25 and as you can see these red dots they are the ones maybe let's remove this because you cannot see the red and here as you can see the, the red dots are the failed part so we need to uh, somehow classify these red dots and uh, flag them uh, or train a model to identify these uh, faulty uh, parts in the data set now and in this this is just a two-dimensional plot uh, features that we have are more than 3000 so it's going to be 3000 dimensional data and so when we train the machine learning model uh, we should be able to uh, train it however we cannot visualize all the data in here now for z uh, we can look at the cum sum x dot alloc uh, we could use the column that we created above just going to type this again so that's c and if we look at the timeline for the cumulative sum uh, it it is like a zigzag however there is something something happens around this particular area as we can see so maybe the features that we created above uh, which is the cumulative sum could pick up uh, this um, uh, this change when we are training the model and next let's look at a scatter plot sns dot sns dot scatter plot data is equal to x x is equal to x dot index so that's the timeline y is equal to column uh, title zero and q is uh, the y that we are going to have as labeled so plt so let's run this and it's pushed together so we can add limit plt dot x x limit and x dot index zero uh, so we go from a first time point and then x dot index so let's go maybe up to uh last last one the 50 100 50 1500 
and see how this looks so that's the data we have and to look it more we can change the size fig is equal to figure dot uh, sorry fig is equal to plt dot figure fig size is equal to let's say 10 uh, 15 by 3 and then run plt dot show okay so that didn't oh that's why okay so as you can see the so here we have these dark points those are the ones that are the faulty parts and the rest of them are the good parts ignore for a moment uh, you can ignore the zero here so we just have minus one and one and there's no specific trend that i can see uh, which you could used to create a feature um, at least from this graph they seem to be mixed into the um, good data so nothing to see here we can try to plot similar uh, similar data points from other features so let's look at random feature 50 and again in this case uh, we there are clusters of the data points but then for along the timeline but then within those clusters there there is no specific position or location where these uh, faulty part data points are located they are all over the place so maybe uh, these uh, we cannot create any new features from this particular information or at least we now know where these data points are and how they are if if they were in a position such as all of them could have been below 610 maybe that could have helped us or maybe if they are in the beginning of the timeline not towards the end maybe it could have helped uh, but nothing like that in here you could think about this more and see if you can find any patterns within that and if you do then you could create a new feature of that and uh, add it to the data frame to train the model now let's look at seasonality so by seasonality what i mean is is there any variation by month basis so let's look at uh, a monthly variation for the data so fig and axis is equal to plt dot subplots and here we create three subplots three comma one and fig size is equal to 11 by 10 and share x is equal to true so now within the for loop for name axis in zip 0 comma 1 comma 2 and put them in a list and then axis so sns will create box plots sns dot box plot data is equal to x x is equal to month and then y is equal to name ax is equal to ax u is equal to x dot uh, x dot y so that's the labels we have and then ax dot set underscore y label and this there's uh, i'll just say any arbitrary units and ax dot set underscore title so this could be just the column name that's coming in and uh, we can also remove the automatic x-axis label so from the all plots but the bottom plot so we'll keep that only for the bottom plot x not equal to axis minus one and x dot set underscore x label and that so now when we run this data frame has no attribute y so uh, yes that is true because uh, we did not add that there okay 
so as you can see in this particular plot let's look at the very first plot the orange boxes are the defect are for defective parts and the blue ones are for the good parts and for the since from the readings from the sensor one show that around this month so these two months which is sometime in may and sometime in september these values seem to be higher so why don't we do this what i'm going to do is remove that and plot this as is so as you can see this is all the data and they seem to be fairly evenly distributed uh, across all the months uh, you can see the box plot ranges are about the same and so that tells that there i don't see any seasonality at least from these plots if if it were seasonal then maybe this could have been up or down or something like that but uh, we cannot see anything of that sort in this case now this box plot has com combined data from both the pass and fail so what we can do now is just split those and look at uh, pass and fail separate so you can see that the pass parts are pretty uh, same pretty evenly distributed they're same across all the years however the fail parts there is some variation so maybe the variable month could capture this so as you can see there are no uh, if no defective there uh, uh, no uh, kind of no data point captured by sensor uh, zero which says that that particular value falls outside its limits and hence the part is flagged as defective you no know. so that doesn't happen for in this case of month of march for some reason uh, and for this second case again february there is few data points but as you can see in all the three cases the month of may seems to have a lot many a uh, uh, lot many uh, flagged uh, data points for fail with that information we can now move on and i uh, look at the next steps which is looking at missing values converting ordinals so the idea of showing these plots was the features that we created above uh, could capture some of the information that see that we saw in those plots now we'll check after we created so many features we will again go ahead and check for missing values and so x dot is na dot sum dot sort underscore values and as ascending is equal to false dot head and let's look at 10 and as you can see we do not have a whole lot of missing values in here so because we did a forward fill and back fill earlier so maybe that's the reason but looking at this i think we should be good to proceed to the next step and do not we do not have to remove any data points here we may do a for, uh, fill NA with zero uh, after we move forward. Now, to convert ordinals. So we created some very features above that we need to convert to, we need to create dummy variables or one hot encode them. So we'll create a list of those columns. Dummyify call columns and these are month then we have week day then we have the hour then we have work underscore shift and x month and then we have weekday and then we have hour and this all this is equal to um, we'll convert it to string type so we can use the pd dot get dummies uh, month so let me just copy all of this 
that is dot as type str and then x a capital x is equal to pd dot x is equal to pd dot concat and here we have so we have two items and this would be axis is equal to one so the first item is x x and because we are going to uh, create dummy variables out of this we need to drop them from the original data frame so x dot drop dummy phi underscore columns axis is equal to one and then the second part is pd dot get underscore dummies and this is x dummy phi sorry this we don't need the course dummy phi underscore columns and with that you can now print x dot shape and then print and get the head as well so there we are and we now we should not see those month so month columns here so if we go all the way to the right so we did so our month uh, all those weekdays so we have uh, encoded all those columns into ones and zeros and hopefully they'll catch some trends uh, in the data uh, that are related to time now the next part that we'll do, look at is drop drop the features with zero variability and so for this x is equal to x x dot var axis is equal to zero if this is greater than zero uh so you can use that values and then this and go in a square bracket and then x dot columns and then that can go in another square bracket and we have x now if we so this is uh print x dot shape this is before print x dot shape this is after and as you can see we drop uh we dropped several columns from this data set because they probably didn't have they had the same value row showed all the rows next uh we need to check for collinearity so collinearity and this time we'll use a different way to remove those columns uh remove the columns that are collinear so we'll first create a core uh, correlation matrix so x underscore corr is equal to x dot corr and then we'll square that then we'll get the upper triangular matrix so ex underscore upper is equal to x underscore corr dot where uh, np dot uh, upper triangular and np dot ones x underscore corr dot shape and if k is equal to zero then we'll uh, set this as type as type np dot boolean and then uh, we'll set the r square value to greater than 0 0.7 so drop underscore call is equal to call for call in x underscore upper dot columns if any uh, x underscore upper call and if the values are greater than 0 0.70 then we need to drop them so here we get the list of columns that need to be dropped and so after this we'll type x is equal to x dot drop and here we have x uh, then drop underscore call and axis is equal to one so again we can look at the shape before and after print x dot shape print x dot shape 
and as you can see we are now down to 1143 records to uh, visualize the collinearity we can do that so visualize visualize this is the same as what we have been seeing before uh, so figure and so let's say x underscore crr is equal to x dot co c o r r squared then sns dot heat map and x underscore c underscore c o r r c map is equal to viridis and when we run this we should get a heat map and in that heat map what we should see is that the orange line is only along the diagonal and there are no orange spots right here so maybe it's not clearly visible but if you add pixel size and magnify it a little bit uh, we, we should be able to see those uh, diagonal yellow dots clearly and before we move on to the modeling part uh, we need to take care of NAs here so I'm going to fill all the NNs with zeros so x is equal to x dot fill na and this is by zero you could try uh, different ways to fill the nn values and see how that affects the results so we'll take a short break here and resume in part two i'll come back to part two in part one we looked at the pre-processing we brought the data in jupyter notebook we uh, created timeline index we created new features based on not only the timeline but also based on the uh, sensor data by adding cumulative sums and taking the sum of the flagged values etc now we are at a position where we can use that to uh, train the model however there is one issue that we still need to resolve and that is imbalance in the classes so let's work on that right now part two actually i should have mentioned this in the very beginning of the video uh, but uh, we are we have not done any fitting of the model yet so we are still good we look at the y so if we look at the y dot value underscore counts we we can see that there are around 1463 uh, records for the parts that have passed so good data and the there are around 104 records that are for parts that have failed so that's also good data but then uh, the the parts have failed so we have sufficiently less number of records for uh, one class as compared to other class so if we train a model on this it is possible that you could get a 90 percent accuracy or 99% accuracy but then uh, you would end up classifying all the minority class as incorrect see what my point so therefore to correctly classify the minority class what we need to do is uh, somehow uh, find a way around this imbalance of number of samples for each class and there are different ways you could do this uh, I'm going to show you just one way, and that is upsampling the minority class to the same number of records as the majority class. So that way, both the classes have the same number of records when we train the model on them. So, to do that, uh, what we are going to do is this resample imbalanced classes, and for this, we are going to use the library from sklearn.utils import resample. Uh, sorry, sklearn. Oh, my mistake again. Okay. And here we'll create a new data frame xy is equal to x dot copy. Then xy. I'm going to add the labels y to this data frame and remove it later so x dot copy we have that we can print shape of xy xy dot shape and we have uh, this data we have one data point extra so if we scroll back we have one one four three and we have one one four four so one column extra 
now x underscore majority so majority is equal to x y and x y uh, dot y is equal to minus one or we could say y of y is equal to minus one so uh, this we are putting all the records that have minus one value for y in the majority class and then the rest of them will put them in the minority class where the value is plus one and again we can print the shape so x underscore underscore majority dot shape and then x underscore minority dot shape and as you can see we have 104 for minority now to up sample what we can do so up sample x underscore minority underscore up up sampled so this is going to be equal to re we are going to use the resample function x underscore minority and uh, replace is equal to is equal to true and n underscore samples we need to specify how many samples we want so we want the same number of samples as the uh, majority also majority and dot shape this would be uh, shape so number of records hence in the zero and we'll specify random underscore state is equal to zero as well so with this we can run this so that with that we have now up sample data uh, up sample data frame for the minority class and uh, we should have checked the shape of that so let me print that print x underscore minority underscore up sample dot shape and uh, my mistake again let me copy this here so we have now one four six three as the majority class so so that's good now we can combine these two so combine together so x underscore up sample is equal to pd dot concat and we put them in a list x underscore majority and x underscore minority underscore up sampled and with this we should now be able to combine those two and we can print print x underscore minority minority underscore up sampled dot shape and then print x underscore up sampled dot shape so we have one one four four records and that's because we have we still have the y in there so if you look at x underscore up sample dot sample dot shape uh sorry dot columns we have the y that's right here so to remove that we need to remove that so for that what we are going to do is uh, use create another data frame x up is equal to x underscore so here's what we can do x underscore up sampled dot columns dot is in y so if that's the column name we don't want that column so we'll put a tilde in here and then put all of this into square brackets and then say x underscore up sample dot columns and then put all of these columns in another square bracket and then say x underscore up sample uh, there are different ways to get rid of just that one column we could simply use a drop y and that would work equally well x uh, dot shape x up dot shape so let's look at there are only list like objects are okay so this should be a list i forgot to put square brackets there so we have now one one four three which is good and then y up sample is equal to x underscore up sampled now the reason we have to the reason why we need to get the y y labels from this and not the original y is because we now have new uh, uh, data created artificially created data 
in there or artificially resampled data in there so the there would be a lot more whys in that data frame and that's why we are using the x up sampled y up dot shape and we have 2926 so we have now the up sample data ready for and here if we just want to check y underscore up the value underscore counts uh, we see that one four six three for both the classes which is good now we can uh, go ahead with the train test split so train test split now you're probably wondering in previous videos we did the standard scalar we did the scaling before train test split and why are we not doing that here so we'll do that after the split and uh, the reason one of the reasons why you want to do the train uh, want to do the scaling uh, based on only the train data is because uh, uh, the information from the train set uh, or the test set could leak into the model because uh, you are scaling it based on the data that had test data in it so this is another uh, this is a better way to uh, work for the scaling that is uh, performing the scaling on the train set rather than a train test set combined before the split so x underscore train x underscore test y test y underscore train y underscore test is equal to train underscore test underscore split and this is x up y up and shuffle is equal to two then stratify shouldn't matter but i'll put it anyways y upper and then we have test size uh, this could be automatic but i'm putting it as 0 0.33 and then we can look at the shape so x uh, print x underscore train dot shape and x underscore test dot shape and here we have around 1960 for the uh, train set and 966 for the test set now before we can do the uh, standard scaling we have to recognize realize that uh, the data set has um, uh, hot encoded uh, columns as well so we what we want to do is separate them out put them in a separate data frame and then put them back in the original data frame after uh, the standard scaling is done so we leave those ordinal or hot encoded columns as is and to do that separation we'll create a function def uh, uh, separator ORD underscore REG DF and then ORD underscore column so that's uh, empty list we are creating for all in DF dot DF dot columns we have uh, if uh, so we are going to check uh, one way to check if the column is ordinal could be this uh, which is df column dot unique so we look at the unique values within that and then sum them and it should be equal to one so uh, it may not work in uh, all the cases maybe if there are edge cases where a column has only zeros but we took care of that uh, by uh, checking the variability earlier n unique n unique and this again there should be two unique values in each of those columns if that's the case then we are good to uh, consider that column as uh, our hot encoded column and we can append uh, we can append the name of that column to this list and then for regular columns regular columns is equal to df dot columns and uh, again is the same method df dot columns dot is in 
and here we have we don't need any columns that are from these ordinal columns so ordinal or let's say let me call this hot uh, encoded or one zero encoded okay that's better so that's the a function we have and then we'll return a df ord underscore column so that's one data frame and then second one is reg underscore column so that's the second data frame so now what we want to do is split the x train so x underscore train underscore ord is equal to uh, and that's the ord and then the other one is x underscore train underscore reg is equal to separator underscore ord underscore reg x underscore train so that gives us those two and then we can use the same columns for test so x underscore test underscore ord is equal to x underscore test and x underscore train draw underscore ord dot columns so we'll use the columns from the same uh, new data frame that we created above and then x underscore test underscore reg is equal to x underscore test and this is going to be reg so with this we can print the shape so x underscore train underscore reg underscore reg dot shape and x underscore test underscore reg dot shape and there's an error so let's find out a column so the spelling mistake or uh, m and there's another typo x underscore train underscore ord is not defined so that's right here x underscore train underscore ord so we are getting that oh that's because i'm I've put a capital x there okay so now as you can see we have same number of features in both the train and test and so we are now ready to standardize so standardize and for standardizing we'll use the same standard scalar so scl is equal to p processing dot standard scalar and then scl dot fit so what we want to do is fit on the train data only so uh, we perform the fit here and that's there and then we can use that fit so those coefficients to transform both the train and test so reg is equal to scl dot transform x underscore train dot underscore reg and then x underscore x underscore test uh, underscore r reg is equal to scl uh, scl dot transform x underscore test underscore reg and once we have that we can now go ahead and combine both the uh, uh, the values that we separated earlier the encoded ones and these so let's do that so combine all of these so x underscore train now would be np dot concatenate and the reason why i'm using np is because the after standard scalar what we get is an array so x underscore train underscore reg np dot array will transform that x underscore train underscore ord to an array and then here we need to specify axis is equal to one so with that uh, that's for the x underscore train and similarly now we'll have x underscore test and what i'm going to do is just change these x underscore test and when we run this before we do that let me print the shape so x underscore train dot shape x underscore underscore test dot shape and when we run this we get the final data frame with uh, the same values 1960 as what we started with 1960966 and 1960966 now while uh, uh, run while running the trial runs it's easier to first uh, just get a baseline model uh, so that you don't waste time 
running through the iterations and running all the models so what we want to do is try to improve the baseline model or the very simple model first and after the accuracy of that improves to a certain point then you can uh, uh, start working with the all the models that are there all the classifiers that are there so here what i'm going to do is use a simple logistic regression so clf is equal to linear underscore model dot logistic uh, logistic uh, regression or uh, eg regression and here specify max iter is equal to 5 e3 now we'll fit that so i is equal to fit x underscore train y underscore train and then uh, use y underscore pred is equal to clf dot predict x underscore test and then print the accuracy so accuracy uh let's say uh so we need to get the matrix first so acu is equal to matrix dot accuracy underscore score y underscore test uh not rest so in test y underscore pred and then here we have accuracy uh score score and this is going to be acu and next we have cm is equal to matrix dot confusion underscore matrix y underscore underscore test y underscore pred and then we have print this is uh, or we can simply say cm now before running this cell uh, what i want to um, say is that uh, uh, i've tried several models before running this particular uh, final output that i'm going to show and you start out with a very low uh, low accuracy you could start at maybe 20 percent accuracy and then slowly as you're adding new features uh, looking at the data try to find trends slowly it, you could increase to 50 60 70 80 and so on so what i'm about to show is after all those trial and error which are not covered in the video this is uh where the model had reached after creating all the features that we discussed above and so this is 90.95 percent so uh, as a practice what you could try is start out with the original uh data frame that we have without any features that we talked about in this video and see what accuracy you get and then um try to create features on your own uh and see if you can improve that let's say you have base accuracy of 70 percent uh you could try to see if addition of another feature uh in that data set or removing another fee uh, feature does that help improve the accuracy to 75 percent or maybe 76 percent and once you go through that process that's uh the actual practice part so once you go to that process you'll reach a point where the model would uh, be able to train and give accuracy that is 90 plus percent so here we have 95 percent that's good sign that we can now go ahead and uh, try out all the models that we usually do in this project series so the uh, setup is the same for that we'll create the functions fit underscore predict which is exactly the same as what we have uh, written in the previous classifier videos clf dot fit x underscore train y underscore train and here we can print clf and then y underscore pred is equal to clf dot predict x underscore test and we have accuracy is equal to matrix dot accuracy underscore score y underscore uh, y underscore test y underscore pred and we can print this so print ac a print within quotes accuracy a score and this is going to be uh, acu and then we have the confusion matrix cm is equal to matrix dot 
confusion underscore matrix and this is y underscore test y underscore pred and uh, we can print that as well so print plt dot show because we have only two classes i'm not uh, going to create a heat map here but uh, that's also an option and then we can return uh, acu and cm so that's the function we have a next let's create the list of all the models so model underscore list is equal to uh, and within this we'll specify the linear underscore model dot logistic regression and uh, we'll specify the max underscore iter equal to 5 e3 i started out with uh, the default but then it gave errors that max iterations reached and solution could not be converged so increased it to this number and after that it seemed to work well uh, also for penalty tried other penalties as well uh, but this was the one that gave better accuracy so that's the one that i'm using in this video uh, l1 ratio is 0 0.45 and you could change all these parameters and see if that affects the model fit logistic regression and with uh, with that let's create another one so logistic regression cv so why don't we copy this so we can save time in typing so logistic regression cv and for this we need to specify cv is equal to uh, three if you add more to that number maybe that could help uh, max iter is 5v3 and then here i'm going to remove all of this stuff and specify random underscore state is equal to zero and then this is going to be the logistic regression cv and uh, apart from this uh, there's another logistic regression cv that i want to try is using the elastic net penalty so i'm going to copy this and paste it here and put a, put a comma there so we have max iter penalty elastic net solver is saga and then for l1 ratios uh, we can specify a couple of l1 ratios and see if any of those improve the model so uh, that 0 0.25 0 0.45 is already there and add another for 0 0.75 so this again is logistic regression cv that's right there now uh, next we'll use our rich classifier and rich classifier cv so linear underscore model dot ridge class uh, classifier uh and this is random underscore state is equal to zero and again we specify ridge uh, ridge classifier and next one uh, we have rich classifier cv so let me copy this paste it here and this is rich classifier cv and for this we can specify the alpha so alphas is equal to we can specify the range 1 e to the power minus 3 1 e to the power minus 2 0 0.1 0 0.4 uh, then we have 0 0.75 uh, 1 and and put on the value of 10 so this is a rich classifier cv and after this we can next move on to sgd classifier so linear underscore model dot sgd classifier and here we'll specify random underscore state is equal to zero and then perceptron uh sorry my mistake moving forward so sgd classifier and after this we have perceptron so linear underscore model dot perceptron and this again has random underscore state underscore state is equal to zero and this is perceptron and finally we have uh, after this we have several so svm dot linear linear svc and this is random underscore state is equal to zero 
so let's label this as linear svc next we have linear discriminant analysis so linear discriminant analysis and this uh, has a label lda so here i try to use shrinkage parameter but uh, i got a non-implemented error so that's why i'm not adding this here quadratic so quadratic discriminant analysis and uh, with quadratic discriminant analysis we can specify the regularization parameter i'm setting it to 0 0.5 you could try out different values for this uh, as well then after this uh, we have passive aggressive so linear underscore model dot passive aggressive uh, classifier and here specify c is equal to 0 0.5 random underscore state is equal to zero and then label this as passive aggressive classifier and finally although this is not from the linear models uh, we'll add the random forest random forest classifier a random state is equal to zero and just random forest la classifier okay so that's the list we have and with that we can now use a for loop iterate through the list and print the results so let's do that result results is equal to empty list and then for clf and name in model uh, underscore list so here we can specify set create some lines dotted lines uh just add 25 there i'm going to copy that so there print uh, print name and then again print that then the results uh, results dot append uh these results that we are appending here we are not using them but uh, those could be used to create plots to see uh compare the accuracy score for example name and then again print this and add uh, new line characters there so okay so now we are done with this let's run this and see uh, how the models work uh, there's an error unexpected keyword argument uh, for logistic regression cv l1 ratio oh there should be a s okay uh, it, there's another error alpha so that's spelling mistake typo lphs okay As another one quadratic discriminant probably made a mistake quadratic discriminant okay. quadratic discriminant analysis a linear model that's in here okay all right so now uh, while this is running uh, i just want to share some of the tips for analyzing this type of data set so uh, the very first one is uh, if there are imbalanced classes uh, we want to make sure to um, find a way to uh, kind of have the same number of records for each of those two classes uh, then the second one is if we have a time series attached to the data then that time series can give a ton of information uh, the most common uh, features that are added with the time series is are based on a rolling window so rolling window could be average over three day interval so that has a smoothing effect on the data set and then the next one is the outliers so because this was a case where the sensor data 
would be could be an outlier to identify a defective part let's say uh, voltage for a good part ranges between 1 to 10 and if it's a, a defective part maybe the voltage goes up to 50 so uh, in this particular case you don't want to remove outliers because those could help us identify the defective part so predict the failure and so those are kept here so the workaround around the outliers is to uh, find ways to create new features that uh, can identify those outliers without removing them while training the model and so that and for uh, standardizing the data set in previous projects we did standardize them before doing the train test split uh, however uh, one of the disadvantages in that particular method is that uh, because you are standardizing on the data that already has the test data in it it could uh, the data from uh, let's uh, uh, we can say that the there could be a data leakage issue from the test set into the train set when we are training the model and so you might get uh, higher accuracy just because of because the train test set data was already in the train set while it was being uh, scaled uh, but that approach may be required for a certain type of situations in this situation uh, we uh, we did the scaling only after uh, splitting the data and that seemed to have worked well and while scaling the data you also want to make sure that uh, you're scaling you're scaling the data that is not one hot encoded so you want to remove those columns or features uh, set them aside take only the other numeric data scale it and then put them back together before um, feeding it into the classifier for training okay so far what we have is we have uh, logistic regression uh, with 95 percent accuracy so we see that there are 46 misclassifications here uh, and then again 95 for logistic regression cv which was uh, where we did not specify the type of penalty but in the second one we did specify so maybe that will give us a different result i'll stop this video here and come back when uh, the entire uh, training is done so here the run is done and we can see that logistic regression cv is at 95 uh, for all these and then rich classifier is 0.89 classifier rich classifier cv is 0.92 sgd classifier is 0.96 perceptron is 0.96 then linear svc is 0.95 lda did not do uh, a pretty good job here so it is at 0.78 uh, several misclassifications and qda is at 0.95 then passive aggressive is at 0.95 and random forest classifier is overfitting as you can see there's zero uh, misclassifications but overall you can see that uh, with the new features that we created so we ended up with how many features uh, let's look at that x underscore train dot shape so we have around we created around 1143 features and we started with how many so we had the data from 590 sensors so we convert we almost have double the number of features in the data frame for training the model so that's those features then helped us uh, improve the accuracy so that was it for this video i hope in this video you learned a uh, different uh, type of data analysis uh, perspective and how to work with 
uh, imbalanced data set and also a data set where the outliers were important and uh, uh, we could not uh, discard the outliers so with this if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below i hope you found this series so far in uh, on the project and analysis of the data helpful um, please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you